You've probably heard me talking about this self-sufficient living skills bundle that's been going on, and I have been spending the last week flipping through so many of the incredible resources within this bundle. Now, I will say there's a lot. There's over 118 different ebooks and courses and lessons sharing incredible wisdom and knowledge with you, so you can live off the land and you don't have to rely on this corrupt and broken system for everything for your family. Anyways, I wanted to share some of my favorite things. One, first off, is off-grid homeopathy. This course is loaded with so much incredible knowledge, talking about homeopathy for first aid, for colds and flu, how to make your own homeopathic remedies. Like, as an herbalist who loves to teach that stuff, that's pretty exciting to hear it in the homeopathy realm. There's also some incredible fermentation guides, so many other amazing herbal recipes and food recipes and how to make your own sourdough bread, how to do your own organic gardening and canning of all of your foods. Really, there is so much. And yes, I know, I know. I've talked about it a ton, but this entire bundle is only $50 right now until Sunday, March 24th. I'm sharing my herbal first aid skills, which is a course that's $47 on its own. I'm sharing recipes that I used when I got my products into REI for herbal first aid kits and so much more. Y'all have to check it out. I'm serious. Like you can absolutely change your life with this bundle. So there is a link in the show notes for you. And I hope you check it out. I hope you take advantage. Don't worry, you don't have to go through everything right away. You can access everything for up to a year. Once you're in the course or have the download, it's yours for life. It is a steal of a deal. Okay, self-sufficient living skills bundle in the links for you. Hello and welcome to The Herbalist Path a podcast where you'll discover how to make your own herbal remedies at home so that you can take better care of yourself, better care of your family, and better care of our planet. I'm Mel. I'm a clinical herbalist, environmental educator, and mountain living mama with this crazy passion for teaching more mamas and their little loves how to use plants as medicine in a safe, effective, and tasty way so that there can be an herbalist in every home again. It's an absolute honor to have you on the journey down the herbalist path with me so that together we can make herbalism. Hashtag spread like wildflowers. Hello, hello, hello. And if you are in the United States, a very, very happy Thanksgiving to you. If you're not in the United States, no worries. There's still so much to be grateful for, despite all the challenging times in our world today. I still think it's so important to focus on gratitude. Like, what do you have to be thankful for? I'm thankful that you're listening to this podcast and that you are fascinated by herbal medicine like I am, because that's how we're going to make herbalism spread like wildflowers. And that is so beautiful. So thank you. Thank you for tuning into this episode of The Herbalist Path. And since it is Thanksgiving here in the States and we're literally prepping all this food, I took a little break to come record this podcast for you. But when we're prepping all of that food, so many of us forget how much incredible medicine is in this very same food, like all those delicious herbs and spices that we're using to make our food taste even better. That's straight medicine. It's potent, it's powerful, it's tasty, and it's delicious medicine. So that's what I want to talk about with you today. Just a quick rundown of some of the herbs you might be using in your traditional feasts and meals and like what they can do for the human body and why you may want to start looking at the kitchen cabinet of yours a whole new wondrous place, maybe a medicine cabinet even. I mean, of course, we all say food is medicine. And that's so true too, right? If we're not eating healthy and good foods for our body, then we're going to have a lot of problems. But 
Still, that being said, a lot of the culinary herbs that we use to flavor our foods can actually help improve our health in dramatic ways as well. And one of my favorites I love oh so much, and I drink darn near every single day. At least I really did when I ran my product line. Um because I made a tea with it. And the tea was called Where Is My Mind? And it was for mental clarity and focus. And this special little culinary herb was a feature ingredient in it because it happens to bring circulation up to the brain and improve the memory and just help you be able to focus better. And it's delicious. If you haven't guessed it yet, it's rosemary. So rosemary is magnificent. (laughs) I could say that about all these herbs though, right? It's actually been used as medicine since 500 BCE. The Greeks and the Romans used it regularly and we still use it today. It was even sometimes put on the graves of their dead people, loved ones, as just a symbol of uh, remembrance of them. When I was going through clinical herb school, I would always take a little sprig of rosemary. Like we'd have really long weekends where we were like in class eight or nine hours a day. And then we'd have like a little walk lunch break. And I would take a walk around the neighborhood in Portland, Oregon. And there was always like every yard had a giant rosemary shrubbery. So I'd just grab a little sprig and stuff it behind my ear for the rest of class so I could stay attentive and alert. And I just love it for that. And it's so delicious too. It's also going to be really, really nice for you if you are really bloated or just feeling like, holy moly, I ate so much food. What in the world did I do to myself? Rosemary is what's called a carminative. So it's going to help to um, ease that gassiness and that bloating and that stuck kind of feeling as well. And it's also known to lift the mood a bit. So any of you that her like me. And when these days get shorter, you get a little bummed out, or some of you may get even more than bummed out. You might benefit from having some rosemary in your life. You can have it as a tea or a tincture, and it really can just uplift the spirits and really help those that have um, just depression or really low moods or even deal with anxiety. So rosemary, uh, it's a whole lot more than just tasty food, right? So the next one I figured we'd talk about because it's one of my favorites because I love stuffing at Thanksgiving time and it's always a sage stuffing, right? Like this beautiful, beautiful herb is it's native to the Mediterranean and it has certainly been used as medicine for thousands of years as well. And it has so many fantastic medicinal properties to it other than just making my stuffing absolutely amazing. Like it's a wonderful carminative also. So, right? So carminative, meaning that it's going to help ease the gassiness and the bloating and the tummy upset as well. Um, it's an antimicrobial, so it can do a really nice job of fighting off viral or bacterial or fungal infections even. And it's really, really helpful for a sore throat. If you have never tried doing like a sage sore throat gargle or something like that, you really, really should. It is very, very helpful and usually something that's just readily available, right? You probably have it on your shelf. It's really easy to grow in your garden, all of that great stuff is so, so helpful, right? We're actually doing a whole like lesson tomorrow. Like I'm recording this on Tuesday before Thanksgiving and tomorrow inside of Apothecary Mama, we're doing a deep dive lesson on the history of all of these culinary herbs and how they've been used as medicine, because it's, it's so fascinating to think about that, right? Our world today has become so disconnected with our plant medicine. But this is the same stuff that your ancestors were using as medicine for thousands and thousands of years. And it's so easy to grow. It's so abundant. We don't have to always get so fancy with our herbal medicines and remedies. Like you don't have to go out and buy everything right now. You probably have everything we're talking about in today's show and all of it can be used as really, really potent medicine. So I know I talk about that a lot. If you've listened to my show a bunch, Um, I think it's just really important to connect with that history. And then we're going to do like a little comparison of like what it was used for, what it's commonly used for today and all that stuff. 
And yes, I think it's fun stuff. <laughs> but of course, I am an herb nerd. Okay, so the other, well, one of the other herbs I wanted to talk about is thyme. You got a little time to hang out with me? I hope so, because thyme is really potent medicine too. It's actually... Um, really, really cool to know that thyme has a couple of constituents in it. One of them is carvacrol. One of them is thymol. Both of these ingredients are very strong antimicrobials. And you'll actually see thymol in things like toothpaste or Listerine mouthwash or Vicks VapoRub or many, many medical disinfectants. And like the list goes on and on and on. They're even in some like pesticides and bug sprays and things like that. They are, they're just extracting this little bitty constituent of this simple, easy to grow plant and, you know, packaging it in a fancy bottle and whatnot, when we can just like drink some thyme tea or make some thyme soup or do a thyme herbal steam, right? Like, what are we, what are we doing? (laughs) Why are we not doing these things more often? Um, Thyme's actually our herb of the month inside of the Kids Safe Herb Club, which if you haven't heard about that, it's pretty cool. You should hop in. Yes, it's called the Kids Safe Herb Club, but all the herbs we talk about in there are also wonderful for adults. Um, and I teach you like some basic botany and plant ID skills and safety measures for herbalism. And there's even a wild crafting lesson in there. And then each month we study one herb in depth where um, you learn how to grow it. You learn how to identify it, how to harvest it, ways you can make medicine with it, ways you can apply it as medicine in your home, way beyond beyond just the like, you know, every herb has that one claim to fame and everybody forgets that it can do other things. But I guarantee you, once you start to learn how to look at an herb and recognize that it can do 10 or 20 different things for people in your family to help heal them or help them feel better in one way or another, you are going to feel like I use the word empowerment, but hot diggity dog. It's only because I hear it from my students all the time. Like, Wow, the level of empowerment I have because I now know how to heal my family. Anyways, Soapbox, Kid Safe Herb Club, join me. It's not just for kids, um, but it is definitely, we do talk about kids and we talk about um, keeping them safe and we do this deep dive herbal study. It's seven bucks a month. Come join me. It's so much fun. Um, We also do a live class every month called Herbal Show and Tell where everybody shares um, what they learned about that particular herb of the month. It's fun. So back to time and time all, um, you know, it is used as a breath freshener. That's why it's in Listerine. It is also really, really fantastic for respiratory infections. So if you had maybe a case of laryngitis or something like that, you could really benefit from doing a time gargle. If you are really bloated and just having very sluggish digestion and you're like, why are things not moving through my body? You may want to have a bit of time. So like, Are you getting this? Like how lucky we are that these are the herbs we're cooking these giant feasts with, right? There's a reason for that. And all of these herbs are also used as preservatives for meats way back in the day. There are so many incredible benefits. That's why probably why all of our meats became so delicious, right? Um, okay. So those are some of my favorites, rosemary, rosemary, (laughs) sage, thyme. And I want to talk about one more of the like spicier, more savory herbs. And that's black pepper. Yeah. Black pepper, the same stuff that you, you know, your server comes up and says, would you like fresh, fresh cracked pepper on your salad? I highly encourage you to say yes every single time because it's going to stimulate your taste buds, right? Which is going to stimulate more of your digestive juices to flow and support the liver and improve your overall detoxification process. So it's going to help you break down your fats. It's going to help you break down proteins. It's also going to help your body to be Um, able to uptake all the other vitamins and minerals and nutrients that are in your foods on that salad. All those beautiful greens, like you're just going to up that nutritive value so much. It's it's really amazing. So um, I highly recommend using more black pepper on your foods because it's tasty and it's so good. And I know I have talked about like all the savory stuff. So let me just quickly touch on some of the 
the stuff that goes into our sweet treats, right? Because once we get through Thanksgiving, it is still the holiday season and everybody's making cookies and pies and cakes and candy canes and all the things. So let's talk about that, right? Let's talk about cinnamon because it's so yumma lama lama. I love cinnamon. What I love to recognize about cinnamon, one, it's native to Sri Lanka or and and Southwest India, Asia area. And it's really cool to think about cinnamon because if you've seen like the beautiful cinnamon sticks or cinnamon quills is their tech, technical name, it's cool because that's bark from a cinnamon tree. And there are these beautiful farmers working their hands and fingers so hard to harvest that bark for us to eat tons of pumpkin pie and apple pie and chai tea and what have you. It's so good. And huh, my, my phone just started playing music and it's not supposed to. <laughs> yeah so anyways pardon that interruption <laughs> stop i don't want that music on then disconnect disconnect I'm your speaker. I'm trying to be disconnected. Disconnect. Go to Bluetooth. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. So my partner's upstairs prepping our dinner for tonight and getting some things together for us to take off down to my mom's for the holiday. And he wanted to listen to some music. And apparently his phone is connected to my speaker down in my office. So anyways... Cinnamon, right? I talked about it. The quills are harvested from these beautiful farmers. And I just think it's so beautiful to think about it coming off of a tree and these people working so hard for us to have so much yummy food, right? Um, there's actually over a hundred different varieties of cinnamon to choose from. So that gets pretty overwhelming. Um, the, uh, um, Cinnamomum cassia or cassia cinnamon is a bit more spicy. It's going to be a bit more pungent. And this is the one we're going to use in more savory dishes when cooking. If you're going to make a curry with it, um, that's the one you're going to use more often than not. And then they've got Ceylon cinnamon or cinnamomum verum. verum. I'm not sure exactly. Um, it's kind of potato potato for me in Latin words sometimes. Um, but that's what we're going to be putting in our pies and our pumpkin spice latte and our cookies and all that good stuff, our gingerbread men, you name it. That's the uh, Ceylon cinnamon. And both are pretty darn similar medicinally. So they are also really wonderful for digestion. They can be really helpful for kiddos with a fever. Um, they also can be really, really nice to ease gassiness and bloating and just cramping in the stomach. It can be helpful too if somebody has a case of diarrhea. So the thing with the digestive purposes for, for cinnamon is that some people are really sensitive to it. It is a very warm herb and it can cause aggravation for some people, whereas for others, it can provide really great relief. And it's also an astringent and a smooth muscle um, antispasmodic. Um, so it's going to like if somebody's got diarrhea and they're cramping and aching, they may really benefit from some cinnamon tea. So um, I also love cinnamon because it helps to like lower sugar cravings, despite us like packing it into all these sugary treats. And it can help to uh, regulate blood sugar levels for people too. So cinnamon, I love it. Another one I love oh so much is peppermint. Um, it's delicious, right? Think about all those candy canes like they were originally made with peppermint now they're made with who knows what kind of nastiness in there but i love peppermint for all the reasons especially like during this time of year oh <coughs> rose please cut that out so another one i want to talk about is peppermint anira i am recording a podcast
So another herb that I love so much during the holiday season that is used in all the things is peppermint. Like our candy canes, all those sweet little treats, they're derived from mint, obviously, right? But they've added a bunch of sugary, nasty, syrupy stuff that we don't really need into our in our bodies. But um, mint, I love also during this time of year because, again, it can get dark and kind of sad and depressing for people. and. Mint can just lift you up, right? I mean, think about it. When you smell something minty fresh, you're instantly like a little more alive or you have some pep in your step and you are just feeling really, really good. Um, I love that about it. And I need that during the wintertime. Like, please give me that cool, brisk, fresh, alive feeling that I get also from slashing through the snow. But that's a whole, whole nother ball game. But peppermint's also going to be great because it is another one that's fantastic for our digestive system. It helps to alleviate nausea. It helps with gassiness and bloating and tummy upset. It has some very gentle antiviral properties while also being a diaphoretic. So it can really be quite supportive for our kiddos during times of cold and flu. And again, it is straight delicious. So that is what I got for you. There are so many other herbs that you can add to your foods that are absolutely medicine. If you don't already have my kitchen cabinet cures guide, I go over like 10 of them that are specific specific for cold and flu season. If you want to dive deeper on these things, I definitely do deeper lessons inside of Apothecary Mama. And other than that, I really truly hope that you have the most amazing, beautiful, peaceful, some time of relaxation holiday weekend. And if you learn something new in this episode, I would absolutely love to hear about it. Please, please, please head on over to iTunes and give me a review for this podcast so that they will let this podcast be heard by the masses. And until next time, take care of yourself, take care of your loved ones. And thanks for being here and making herbalism spread like wildflowers. Bye. Thank you so much for tuning into another episode of The Herbalist Path. Being on this journey with you is absolutely incredible. If you dig this episode, please leave me a review on your favorite podcast player and share it with your friends so that together we can make herbalism hashtag spread like wildflowers. On another note, I must mention that while I know you're getting some good info here, it's important to remember that this podcast is purely for entertainment and educational purposes and is not intended to be a substitute for medical treatment. While the information in this podcast is absolutely relevant, herbs work differently for each person and each condition. That's why I recommend you work with a qualified practitioner, whether that be another herb herbalist, a naturopath, or your doctor. So thank you again. I am truly honored that you're tuning into these episodes and on the path with me to make sure that there's an herbalist in every home again. Don't forget to share this episode with your friends so that we can make herbalism. Hashtag spread like wildflowers. It has been so much fun and so, I don't know, joyous watching all of my medicinal plant friends popping up in my garden from the elecampane to the comfrey and the arnica. I love seeing these friends pop up. And if you are still trying to decide what to grow in your medicinal herb garden, you've got to grab my guide. It's all about the most essential herbs that every mom should know and should grow. So I teach you how to grow them and the many different ways that you can use them. If you want to grab the guide, go ahead. It's free and I'm pretty sure you're going to get a lot of delight and use out of it. And there's a link to it in the show notes. I'm wishing you tons of happy medicine planting.